So we uh, introduced, uh, I am just go back and introduce uh, the creation operator first that if it acts on a vacuum state, it gives you a state which has the ith spin orbital, okay. And then if you add a j dagger on this, then you make a determinant which is j i which means essentially it is a determinant j is the first column. So, this is the rule of creating electrons and then we found that the a i dagger a j dagger plus a j dagger a i dagger is 0, the anti commutator is 0, okay. So, then we are introducing the reverse operator which is basically the annihilation operator. So, the annihilation operators do exactly opposite. First to know that if it acts on a vacuum, it simply gives you 0 because it cannot annihilate, nothing is there. It however, if it acts on a state or a determinant which has chi i on the left and then whatever is there, chi i and then let us say chi 1 etcetera to chi n minus 1, then it generates a state which is chi 1 to chi n minus 1. So, the idea is that these are annihilation operators which immediately remove a spin orbital exactly to the right, immediately to the right. So, these are called annihilation operators. What we wanted to show is that these annihilation operators are adjoint of the creation operator. Okay, so, that is what we wanted to show. So, this is the definition of the annihilation operator. Why is it an annihilation operator? I have written now in A i, but of course, this is A i dagger. So, it is deliberately written because I will now show that they are adjoints of this. So, we did that last time. So, let us take a determinant which is A i dagger, A j dagger, vacuum. So, exactly negative of this, okay. So, let us take a two electron determinants A i dagger A j dagger vacuum. So, that is i j, right. By definition first j will be created, then i will be created. Is it okay? So, I can write this as A i dagger, then I can write this as A j dagger vacuum which is A i, A I dagger j. The same state k I am writing as A i dagger j because A j dagger vacuum is a, is a state where only one electron is there in chi j orbital, correct. So, now let us take this conjugate of this. So, let us write this conjugate as j A i dagger dagger, right and I will call this j A i. I will show that this A i is an annihilation operator, okay. Right now, this A i is just a conjugate of A i dagger, do not interpret as an annihilation operator, okay, because I will show that they are annihil they are actually adjoints of the creation operator. So, I just write this as J A i, is it okay? So, then we do the normalization of k k. What is the value of k k? Because k is a two electron determinant, k k is 1, right because all, all these determinants are normalized, they are all orthogonal, orthonormal orbitals. So, k k is 1. So, I write for the conjugate k this j a i and on the right side I simply write k. 
So, this k is written as j i and the right side I wrote just the k. Okay. So, now I am going to interpret j a i k is equal to 1. So, what can be 1? Unless this itself is j, right. So, I, I made this 1 in two ways. One is this determinant normalization is also 1, 2 electron. Another is the orbitals are also normalized. So, now I, I propose that the a i k must be equal to j. At this point a i is not an annihilation operator, a i is simply adjoint of the creation operator, right. But now I am showing that this a i acting on k must give you j. So, what is my k? k is i j. So, a i acting on i j must give me j. Hence, I show that the a i is a annihilation operator. and it annihilates exactly the next to it. So, both these rules, okay. So, so I initially of course yesterday I discussed the annihilation operator, but I have not showed, I am now showing, yesterday I was showing it actually, but probably did not complete it, that why are they adjoints of creation operator. So, to show this, I just take a 2 electron determinant and then write this as AI dagger, AJ dagger vacuum, which is J and write this no, no, the conjugate of k as j a i dagger dagger which is now defined as j a i, but this a i need not be an annihilation operator. Then I show that the j a i k must be equal to 1 which means a i k must be equal to j which essentially means that a i annihilates on a spin orbital i from k. Is it clear? I hope everybody gets the logic. It is a little involved logic, but it is easy you can, this is a 2 electron, but you can show it in many, many, many other ways, okay. So, essentially if you show this, then it is easy to show the anti-commutation a i a j equal to 0, just by taking the conjugate of this. This I have already proved. I can prove it by showing that this annihilation operator in the same way. Yesterday I did that, but a simpler proof is just to take a conjugate of this. As, as soon as you understand that the Annihilation operators are nothing but adjoints of the creation operator. Okay. Then we will then we ask the question: what happens if I have a commutation between two operators, AI and AJ dagger? So one of them is creation, one of them is annihilation. What happens to the anti-commutation between these two operators? Okay. These parts are clear any i and j it is 0 and of course specifically also for i equal to j. i equal to j essentially shows that you cannot destroy twice because a i i, a i, a i becomes 0. So, you cannot destroy twice, okay. So, remember the anti-commutation here is very important. If this was a commutation for i equal to j you would not have got anything because it means AI, AI minus AI, AI is 0, that is a triviality, right. So, you would not have got the new physics. So, here the physics is that if I equal to J, AI, AI plus AI, AI is 0. The plus is important. If it was a commutation, then of course, it is trivially 0. So, I do not get, I do not get a new physics, you understand. Here, because of the plus, I can now show that AI, AI must be 0. So, null operator, which means I cannot annihilate twice, just as I cannot create twice the same orbital. So, the, so this is why the anti-commutation is very important. The fact that I have an anti-commutation relation and not a commutation relation, because commutation relation would not have given this, because that would be an identity for i, I equal to j, okay. So, let us ask this question now for AIAJ dagger. Let us do it in two steps. So, let first I take i equal to j. So, it means I want to define what is a i a i dagger plus a i dagger a i, right. So, I am, I am, I am asking this question of a i a j dagger or a j a i dagger whatever for i equal to j. So, I have the 
uh, anti commutator which is now AI, AI dagger plus AI dagger AI, correct. So quite clearly let, a, let us let it act on a general determinant. So I will find out what happens if it acts on a general determinant. So there are two, three possibilities. Let us say the determinant contains chi i, okay. Then of course this will act, but this will not act, okay. If it does not contain chi i, then this will act. If it contains chi i, then this will act, this will not act. So only one of them will act. Okay. So, let us take this AI AI dagger when the determinant does not include chi i. So, what will it do? It is a very trivial thing. It will first create and then it will annihilate. So, I will simply get back the determinant. And of course, if AI dagger AI acts, it will be 0. So, if chi i is present in the determinant, then I can say that the anti commutator AI AI dagger acting on the determinant is equal to the same determinant. If i is present in the determinant, so that is a simple way of writing, it is a simple group group notation that i is included in the determinant okay i is not included in the determinant that's what i proved okay so then of course ai ai dagger will first create and annihilate the next is i is included in the determinant if i is included in the determinant then of course the first one will not act that will give you zero so what will act is just ai dagger ai so, AI dagger AI acting on the determinant and let us say now the determinant is something like this chi i some chi n. So, chi i is included somewhere, I do not know where, somewhere it is included. However, to let this act on chi i, I must bring chi i here. So, a simple way to do that is to flip k and i. A, I. So, I get minus AI dagger AI chi i, chi k, chi n. So, simply replace k by i. So, two, two columns of a determinant just changed, then of course, it is just a negative sign. So, then I can allow a i to act on chi i and then make a i dagger here. So, I will get back minus chi i, chi k, chi n, correct? Because I will I will first annihilate and then create and then I push it back again here. So, I will get chi k here, chi i here, chi n here with the plus sign. So, exactly as it was, right. So, I first push it by let us say the, let us say my first column was k, some k and I arbitrarily lies somewhere. So, I first change this to first column, then I annihilate and create and then push it back. So, the neg two negative signs will again give me positive and the other one will no longer act AI dagger AI, AI AI dagger. So, essentially I can again say that the commutator of AI AI dagger of this determinant is also the same determinant. So, this two is one I is included in the determinant, another I not included in the determinant. In either case, if the anti commutator works on the determinant, it gives you back the same determinant, right. And of course, these two sets of determinants span the entire set because either in a determinant i is present or not present, that is only two options, right. So, then I can say for any general function, if this anti commutator works, it will give, give you back the same function. So, in one case, one part of the anti commutator is working, in another case, the other part of the anti commutator is working, okay, among the two. So, I can now write that a relation that AI AI dagger is equal to 1 when i is equal to j, 
then we come to the next case if i is not equal to 0. So, explicitly now we are talking of case b where i and j are different remember that they are different now. So, we again look at a i a j dagger now plus a j dagger a i acting on a general determinant and let us say when this will survive, when this will not survive. If you look at it very carefully, if either way j is present and i is absent, it will not survive. Because if j is present and i is absent, this cannot act, neither can this act because j is present. So, I cannot create right and in fact if either of them is either of them is true this will not act. So, the only time this will give a non-zero value possibly is when i is present and j is absent is it clear. So, this determinant can exist or give a non-zero value this action can give a non-zero value. only if i is present and j is absent in the starting determinant. Okay? Otherwise, it will become 0. Is it clear to everybody? Because then either a i will not act or a j dagger will not act. And now remember a i and a j dagger are different, i is not equal to j. So, you cannot say that no, no, I will first create and then annihilate that is already done. They are now explicitly different. Okay? So, so if, if j is not present, if j is present then of course, this will automatically give you 0. If i is absent then this will give you 0 and this will also give you 0 because even if I create j, I cannot annihilate i because i cannot be equal to j. So, each of the strings will give you 0, each of the strings. So, there is un unlike in that case that either this will act or this will act, each of the string is going to be 0 unless both are both are true, which means i must be present and j must be absent, both must be true. Is it clear? Because you look at the string, it is a i a j dagger, a j dagger a i, correct. So, so, if, if, if this is not true, each of them will become 0. Because if i is not present, a i cannot act. If j is present, then a j dagger cannot act. Yes, that is what I, I and j, then, then a j, a j dagger will not act. Yeah, I will act. So, what? Eventually, whole thing has to give you non-zero. You take, take a determinant a j dagger a i both i and j are present. So, let us take chi i chi j. Okay. So, this will act this will give me a j dagger chi j this is 0. See eventually the string has to act the op product operator has to act. So, this is not a question of that this acts and gives you something after that what happens. Okay. So, this is the only condition in which this will survive. And let us let us analyze what happens then. Is it clear? Because I have already eliminated i equal to j case, I have shown that this is equal to 1, a i dagger a i equal to 1. So, now you cannot say that I will create and annihilate the same orbital because there are two different orbitals. Now explicitly i is not equal to j. Okay? Is it clear? All right. So, let me now take that determinant. So, my determinant is i is present, j is absent. So, I have a i a j dagger plus a j dagger a i on a determinant which is now let us say generally chi k etcetera, somewhere chi i is there exactly like the way I write chi l or chi n whatever. So, I am just marking chi i, chi i is an arbitrary determinant the orbital which is now present 
and of course very importantly j is absent so j is absent so let us see now how how do i do this before i even start this problem let me bring kaya here because i know i have to do that so let me write this as a minus ai aj dagger plus aj dagger ai with kaya here and kai k here so all i have done is to interchange kai i and kai k so that is you do not have to bother about how many operations are there just interchange so my whole uh, impetus is to bring kai i right in the beginning so now let us allow each of these operators to act and then we will sum and and do not forget the negative sign ok so when a z dagger a i acts what happens you create you annihilate i and immediately create j right here so i is replaced by j correct and when ai z dagger comes again j comes but then i have to first interchange chi i to annihilate okay so let's do this first so ai z dagger chi i chi k chi n so what is the result of this i first have ai then i i have one electron extra now because i am allowing aj dagger to act so kai j kai i kai k kai l correct then i interchange so i make it minus of ai then kai i kai j kai k kai l okay now i can annihilate kai kai i so this is gone so the result is minus kai j kai k kai l so what did i do i said if ai aj dagger acts on this determinant kai i kai k kai l it will give you minus kai j kai k kai l because of the fact that i am first creating j and then annihilating i i have to do an another interchange i have a negative sign here so don't forget it so that i will do at the end okay so the next is aj dagger ai so aj dagger ai acting on the same determinant now kai i kai k kai l remember i had an arbitrary determinant i have first this negative sign is to bring kai i here okay with kai kai k interchanging with kai k now this is easy because simply i is annihilated j is created this is very easy if you first annihilate and create all you do is to create in that place okay particular uh, by interchanging you can easily show this so this then now becomes kai j kai k kai l okay exactly like this determinant but with a without the negative sign now it is very clear either i take the negative sign or doesn't matter it is zero the sum of these two is zero because it is the same determinant with the opposite sign so of course i can then conclude that ai aj dagger plus aj dagger ai acting on this determinant where what is this determinant this determinant is where i present j absent remember explicitly is also equal to 0 and we have already noted in all other cases the anti this is anyway 0 the anti common is 0 that I have already noted that it will survive only for this case but even in this case it is 0 right. So I can then say that if I not equal to 0 by again the same argument that any given state can be expanded in terms of all the sets of determinants i can argue that the ai aj dagger is equal to 0 if i not equal to j for the case of ai dagger ai it is fairly simple okay that is if there is a i you annihilate you bring it annihilate and bring it back so it is same if i is that is if i is present if i is absent the this ai dagger ai will become zero but then the ai ai dagger will act so either one of these two terms will be there depending on chi is there 
kaja is there or not there. And each in each case, it, you will get back the determinant. So basically, the sum of this is equal to 1. So either 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0. So if kaya is present, then the, if kaya is present, then this will act, ai dagger ai. First it will annihilate, then it will create. You can't create first because kai is already present. So the question is that if kai is absent, this will act and the other one will not act, right? Question is what you do first? That is very important. I am ai dagger ai of course means I am creating and annihilating the same orbital, but what you do first? is very important. So depending on this will survive, one of these two terms will survive. But since you are talking of plus an anti commutator, anyway one of the terms will survive to give you one. Whereas for i not equal to j, I showed everything anyway becomes 0. Only if i is present, j is absent, it can survive. But even in this case, I showed that this is equal to 0. Okay. So first we had shown, remember AI dagger, AJ dagger equal to del, uh, 0, anti commutator. Then I, I argued that the annihilation operator that we defined are the adjoints of the creation operators. I showed this today. So then of course the anti commutation relation of the annihilation operator comes straight forward from the adjoint to the creation operator. And then I showed the anti commutation between one creation, one annihilation operator, which essentially takes care of everything. So this particular thing can now be rewritten as of course you know how to rewrite with a Kronecker delta, right? So do not forget your Kronecker delta. So whenever this 1 and 0, so I want to avoid. So eventually of course it is just delta ij and then delta will take care. Is it okay? Let me ask the question. Can you show that two spin orbitals, chi i and chi j, of course we know equal to delta i j and this is the cornerstone of our anti-commutation relation, but can you show this now by second quantization? You understand the question? Can you, if I, if I just ask show using the second quantization anti-commutation relation, show that because obviously the anti-commutation relations are based on orthonormality. So now orthonormality you should be able to prove by anti commutation. So I am just reversing the problem. Remember it is a Kronecker delta. So if i equal to j it is 1, i not equal to j it is 0. So you now you know. We just now did. Huh? I hope all of you can do it, but let me just solve it. So what is chi i? Adjoint, it is vacuum AI. Because remember, what is chi i? Ket. Chi i ket is AI dagger vacuum, correct? So, what will be the conjugate chi i? Vacuum AI dagger dagger, and I have shown that this is annihilation operator. So, it is vacuum AI. So, the annihilation operator acts on the left of the vacuum, creation operator acts on the right of the vacuum. Annihilation operator cannot write, act on the right of the vacuum because there is nothing to annihilate. But left it will act because of an adjoint. Then I write chi j. It is aj dagger vacuum. Correct? So I am writing the left hand side. So, so vacuum AI. Now what will you do? You will actually go back and use this anti commutation. Right? So how do I write the anti commutation? AI aj dagger. Remember the anti commutation. AI AJ dagger equal to delta IJ minus AJ dagger AI, correct? Remember how to use this. AI AJ dagger plus AJ dagger AI equal to delta IJ. So AI AJ dagger is delta IJ minus AJ dagger AI. So let me put this here. Vacuum, I am just writing V to simplify. V delta IJ minus AJ dagger AI. V. Correct? Now look at the first term. Delta IJ is a number. Kronika delta is a number, either 1 or 0, does not matter. So it comes out and vacuum, vacuum expectation value is, uh, uh, norm is 1. Correct? So vacuum also is normalized state. 
So, you have just delta Ig minus vacuum Aj dagger Ai vacuum. Correct? Is it is it okay? And now you see Aj dagger Ai acting on vacuum is 0 because Ai cannot annihilate. Neither can Aj dagger can uh, dagger can act on the left. So, this is 0. So, the result is delta Ij. Note what we are doing is that based on the orthonormality, we already did this anti commutation relation. Now, I am reversing the problem. I am saying the anti commutations are God. Once I have anti commutation relations, I do not need to do anything else. That is the whole idea of second quantization. Can you now construct everything from the anti commutation? So, including the fact that the spin orbitals are orthonormal. Because if my anti commutation is right, the spin orbitals must be orthonormal. Okay? So, the, the creation of the electron in those spin orbitals, those spin orbitals must be orthonormal. So, I am just trying to prove that chi i chi j equal to delta i j. So, I hope you see how the proof goes. Okay? Okay, let us take another problem which I wanted to take first. Remember among the most used anti commutation, you will actually need to know this. This will be the most used anti commutation, most useful anti commutation. And this is written in this form a i j dagger is delta i j minus a j dagger a. Of course, this could have been a j dagger a i, this could have been a i a j dagger, does not matter. Because they are plus, so it does not matter. So, now let me take another problem. Yeah, so let us say given a determinant k, so given a determinant k which is chi 1, chi 2, chi n, that is like a Hartree Fock determinant, right? It is a Hartree Fock determinant or whatever determinant, does not matter. How do I write this? I write this as a 1 dagger, a 2 dagger, a n dagger, correct? Back one. Remember, this is how I have to write it. The first one will come actually last because I am building the first column with n dagger, then n minus 1 dagger, etc., etc., a 1 dagger. So, just please learn how to write this, just looking at the determinant. The order is very, very important because if you interchange, then there will be sign change. Okay? So, this determinant can be written this in terms of V is just a short form of vacuum. So, that is a given. Now, we want to show that k a i dagger a j k equal to 1 if i is equal to j and that orbital i is included in the subset of 1 to n. Okay, I hope you understand is 0 otherwise. Otherwise means otherwise. So, I hope specific things you should be able to understand. If i is equal to j, I am annihilating a i. So, a i must be included here. Otherwise, I cannot annihilate, right? Okay? I am now saying that if if otherwise, what happens if i is not equal to j, then what, what are the other possibilities? That I can annihilate j here, okay? And then I, if I annihilate, I have, to, I have to create, but I cannot create if i and j are in the subspace. So, so the only trick, only thing to understand is that both i and j, I should also write, both i and j are in the subspace of 1 to n. So, of course, in that case, I cannot create. So, you can physically understand. So, that is my i and j. i and j are basically among the 1 to n orbitals. So, in such a case, it is equal to 1 if i equal to j and 0 otherwise. That means, if i is not equal to j, it will become 0. All right. 